the time on my block, I could tell you some stuff you find hard to believe. Like what? I ask skeptically. Vic glances at his little sister, but she seems absorbed in her book. You know Carlos, Carlos and Tariq, right? Sure. They're in Miss Brinson's class. Benson's class, I say. Right. Well, a few months ago, they were fixing up the backyard of the rundown house on Barkley Street, and they found a phoenix. No way. It's true, Vic insists. We found a picture of it in the Brooklyn Museum. We tried to take care of it, but it was nearing the end of its life. So Vic looks over at his sister and decides not to finish his sentence. But I need to know the fate of the phoenix. So what happened, I ask. Vic leans in and says it went up in flames. But that means a new phoenix was born from the ashes. I haven't seen it yet, but I keep my eyes open just in case. You never know what you might find in Brooklyn. I don't know what to say. Ma said Magic was leaving the city, but maybe she was wrong. Or maybe Ma was right, and Vic's baby Phoenix had to find somewhere else to live. The best part of Vic's story is that I've never heard it before, which means he knows how to keep a secret. So, Vic says, what's your unbelievable story? I make sure Kavita is still engrossed in her book. Then I step closer to Vic and say, my friend's missing and she's a witch. Vic doesn't blink, so I go on. She's received an important package from Madagascar and instructions to take care of what was inside. And what was inside, Vic asks. Three dragons. This time, Vic's eyes grew wide. Actual dragons? I nod, but then confess. Well, I haven't seen them, but that's what Ma said. She saw them? Uh, not exactly. Ma kept them in the dark because there's this thing called imprinting. Vic nods like he doesn't need an explanation. And your friend didn't want the dragons to get attached to a human. Smart move. So where are the dragons now? I point to Ma's bag over on the bench. Then my heart skips a beat. The first thing I notice is that Kavita is no longer reading her book. The second thing I notice is that a familiar red mint tin is on her lap and it's open. No, I cry, but it's too late. Not only are three tiny dragons peering out of the tin, Kavita is feeding them. Cut, Cavi, what are you doing? Vic asks. Sharing my snack, she replies, without even looking at her brother. Vic and I draw closer to get a better look at the dragon. They're so tiny that they must have had plenty room in Ma's tent, mint tin. Two have wings and one has a full body with plates along its curved spine. All of them have purpley scales that shimmer like a feather that circle the necks of the strutting pigeons. The dragons look harmless and they purr happily as they eat the crumbs Kavita is sharing with them. I point to the plastic sandwich bag on Kavita's lap. Inside are two round ivory colored cakes. One is whole and the other has been broken into pieces by Kavita so that she can feed the hungry dragons. I remember what Ma said about not giving the dragons marshmallows. What's in the bag? I asked anxiously. That's Peta, Vic explains. My auntie brought us some from her shop in Queens. I've never heard of Peta, but the dragons can't get enough of it. Kavita laughs as they nip at her hands and jostle for more. Ma said newborn dragons love sticky sweet things, I tell Vic. Then they'll love pita, he says. It's made from milk, sugar, and cardamom. Vic reaches into his sister's bag and takes out the cake that's still whole. A sliced green pistachio nut has been pressed into the center. Vic breaks the cake and hands half to me. Try it. Vic pops his half of the pita into his mouth. I take a small bite at first, but then quickly cram the rest in my mouth too. It's so good. For a moment, none of us say a word as we savor the sweet, creamy cake. But as the sugary treat dissolves, I realize that we have even bigger problems now. The dragons are gazing up at Kavita with admiration. And I could be wrong, but it looks like they're a little bit bigger than they just were five minutes ago. I don't want to go off on a little girl, so I start with a simple question. Hey, Kavita, how did you find the dragons, I ask. I needed a napkin, so I looked in your purse. It's not my purse, I tell her. It belongs to Ma. Cabby rolls her eyes and says, whatever. I was looking into your mom's purse when I heard something crying, so I... Dragons don't cry, Vic said irritably. How do you know, Kavita asks in a voice that sounds just as annoyed. They sounded sad, so I opened the tin and gave them some of my snack. I look at Vic and he looks at me before sighing heavily. I'm guessing this isn't his first 
time his little sister has caused so much trouble. She might be faking it, but Kavita gives us an innocent look and asks, what's the big deal? You might have no right to poke around in Jackson's purse, Vic says angrily it's not my purse i remind him that's right it belongs to a witch Vic hisses the last word and kavita eyes grow wide but you meddled with her dragons and now they think you're their mother Vic tells her i don't mind kavita says while stroking the wingless dragon under her chin the two winged dragons get jealous and clamor for her attention rubbing against her arm like cats i mind i exclaim then I look around at the people going in and out of the park and realize I need to keep it down. Those dragons aren't supposed to be here, I tell Cabby. They were supposed to be delivered to someone else. But now you've ruined everything. If Kavita feels bad about what she's done, she sure doesn't show it. Vic picks up the red tin and holds it in his palm. Put them back in, Cabby. Now, he demands. Cabby frowns. They don't want to stay inside that horrible little tin. It doesn't matter what they want, I cry. They need to stay hidden until we can find Ma and deliver them to the right dimension. Just put them back, Cavi, or I'll tell Mom you were going through a stranger's bag. That works. Cavi puts all three dragons in her palm and lifts them to her mouth to give each one a kiss. Then she settles them in the tin one by one. But when Vic tries to close the tin the lid the dragon screech and howl like they're in pain i snatch the tin from vic and try to force it shut stop you're hurting them kavita screams vic sighs and says to me i think you're gonna need a bigger tin Jax." he's right just a few crumbs of pita has led the dragon's growth spurt we're going to need a larger container what about a plastic bag i ask let's put them in there now for now and zip it up vic grabs the bag with the leftover pita from inside his sister's lap he takes out the crumb cake and offers it to me. I shove the pita in my mouth and then dump all three dragons from the tin into the little bag. But as soon as they start eating the crumbs sticking to the bag, their scaly, withering bodies start to grow some more. Ouch! Vic cries as he drops the bag on the ground. I snatch it off the ground and see that one of the corner of the plastic bag has melted. Uh-oh, I say. I think these fire-breathing dragons. I unzip the bag and whisk a smoke rises from the mouth of the wingless dragon we need something fireproof vic suggests i might have something at home i shake my head and watch the dragon as they flick their forced pink tongues over the few pita crumbs left in the plastic bag i don't have time trouble's on his way vic gives me a funny look trouble that's ma's replacement i tell him you and your sister don't have to stay vic i honestly don't know what's going to happen next Vix puts a reassuring hand on my shoulder and says, well, we'll wait with you and find out. What will you do with the dragons, Kavita asks, as she puts up, gets up from the bench. That's up to Jackson, not you. Vic snaps at his sister. You need to learn to mind your own business, Cavi. Cavi turns away in a huff and unzips her own bag to place her book inside. I take up Ma's purse and search inside for another container. When I can't find a suitable replacement for the mint tin, I unzip a side pocket and put the sandwich bag inside. Then I close the side pocket and click the latch and that holds Ma's purse closed. Sorry about my sister, Vic says. I should have kept a closer eye on her. I turn around and shrug wearily. Don't worry about it, Vic. It's been a crazy kind of day, I tell him. I look up the block and see a tall man with a bushy gray bearded and furry gray eyebrows coming our way. And it's not over yet. The tall man hand, holds out his hand before he reaches us. But with three long strides, he stands right in front of me. You must be Jax, he says, with a big smile that reveals a gold tooth. I'm Charlie Randall, but my friends call me Trouble.